My name is Tomasz Agenski, you can call me Tomas. I'm not an economist, I'm not a historian, so there might be a lot of errors in my presentations. Uh, I just, in my presentation, I just wanted to start that one year ago, Mikołaj called me and, and put me in front of a seemingly impossible task uh, to produce a documentary about Karl Menger. You know, one hour and a half full-length documentary about Karl Menger. And I was, you know, of course I knew who Karl Menger was back then, even, you know, w without being an economist. I knew that somehow. Um, but my first reaction was that it's, it's impossible to, to do a documentary like that, actually. And we are in the middle of the production, so I have nothing to sell you, actually, today. I cannot show you much. We are in the middle of shooting, so maybe it's still impossible. But then I decided that probably it's a, it's a great idea to try to do something that sounds impossible. Because, you know, don't get me wrong, but this subject is dead. Nobody knows who Karl Menger was. I'm sorry. There was, we went there with, 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 with Mikołaj two days ago to the cemetery. Not a single light on Karl Menger's grave. So you, shame on you, Viennese fellas, but, but nobody remembers good old Karl today. You know, that's a pity. There were like five or ten uh, candles on Beethoven's grave. So from zero to ten, <laughs> yeah, you know where we are. Um, but I know there is a lot of uh, you know, media content, libertarian media content on YouTube. And my first response when, I, when we started you know, talking and having that ping pong conversation, how could that movie look like? So my first reaction was how it cannot look like. Where we know, what we know, where we don't want to go. We don't want to go to a typical production of uh, liberty-oriented documentary that it's, that it's on YouTube. And there is like a plethora of those, of those videos. Probably since 2008, since the, the boom of YouTube, there has been a lot of those. Um, so let me start with, um, with my presentation, how I see how the movie should not look like. <laughs> he was born in Galicia. Okay, you, you can spot an error already in, in here, because he was, you, you, can you see the error in that? Um, I mean, I'm sorry for it. It was 1840, not 41. Um, you know, the, the only presentation without errors are the ones that you do at 4 o'clock in the morning before your speech, so this is not the one. So he studies in Vienna. You're, this is the story we know, you know, the obvious, let's say, Mark Skousen version of Karl Menger history. He studies in Vienna, he writes for a newspaper, then he goes to a stock exchange, discovers marginal utility somehow, suddenly, writes a book that started it all. Rudolf, of course, everybody loves Rudolf, right? Nobody remembers Karl Menger, but everybody has seen Meyerling, so it's great. Everybody loves the book, but not the German guys, suddenly. Um, big battle starts, of course. Nobody remembers the outcome of the battle. It's so important, but no re nobody remembers how it, how it finished. Menger teaches other people, uh, defends sound money, retires, and dies. So this is the, the story of Menger. And actually, if we would go this way, we, we would fit into the Wikipedia standard of movie production about every dead scientist ever. Uh, is born, studies, writes a book, somebody disagrees, writes another one, or ten, sometimes even translated, has followers and enemies, gets a huge title and dies. Probably, um, I, I, I was thinking about it today, um, Karl Marx doesn't fit that picture somehow, but, but most of it. So my idea was to go and start this kind of a ghost searching of Karl Menger. You know, not to produce a movie that will, I don't know, bring more followers into the Austrian School of Economics, that will promote the ideology. Don't get me wrong, we're on the same ship. I'm here not by any accident, but, but, but like the first idea was create a movie that may be interesting. You know, go and find those places and try to I don't know, rethink the ideas that, you know, yeah, he went to the stock exchange, he discovered the marginal utility, and, and the moment you say marginal utility, basically, half of your viewers are gone. I'm sorry, I mean, this is, this is, this is hard. I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to explain marginal utility to my folks, to my neighbors, you know? I, I think I understand it, so maybe, um, so maybe, yeah, so maybe let's go to, to Novi Sanj and try to find the places and, and, and the situation that shaped Karl Menger somehow. Because, you know, um, on, on several occasions, several people asked me, uh, people who are absolutely like zero into libertarianism, Austrian School of Economics, never heard about Rothbard, never, or Mises or whatever. 
Moses von Moses, Ludwig von Moses. So, so, and what, 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 what's the next project you're working on? And I, and I had to like squeeze that story into like the elevator pitch, but like only to the, from zero to one floor, like the, like the shortest pitch I can ever do. And I was, and I started like I don't know talking about like inequalities, for example. You know, we had this guy who was born. Uh, to quote a famous investor and TV personality, in a shithole country at the end of the empire. And like 28 years later, he's in the middle of the empire. And three years later, he's the teacher of a, of a next crown. Uh, he's the teacher to Rudolf. And he's not teaching him biology. He's teaching political economy. So come on, man. Like 30 years, right? So that's a huge step. That's, a, that's, like, that's, that's like to the moon, especially when you think that this is 1870, 1880, no internet, no Wikipedia, you know, and he's, he got there. So this is a beautiful story. Um, so I, yeah, we already mentioned, Christoph mentioned the library. Um, and as you probably see, um, I decided that in my, the, 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 the second part of my presentation, I'm not going to use any words. Um, I mean, on screen, of course, I'm going to speak, but... There will be no words, because I wanted to, um, and I still want to, and I'm, and I'm working on it, um, to find the pictures that will stay with us, not, not the data, you know, not the proportion, not the graphs, not the Excel type of filmmaking, and, and you know. So, so we want to produce a movie that is not edited in, in PowerPoint. It's not just another presentation when, where, where, you know, talking heads are just like spewing facts to you. They're so smart, right? We're going to have a lot of talking heads because, you know, people, the only people who know about Karl Menger actually are economists and historians. So yeah, they will appear in that movie, but, but we need to find a balance. We need to find those, those, um, those pictures. So everybody talks about those books of Karl Menger that we can right now find. Uh, half of it is in the Duke University, the other half uh, in Japan, or maybe like a bigger chunk is in Japan. Um, but there, is, there are also stories, and the more I started reading about Karl Menger, um, and the more I started reading what Karl Menger wrote, not to learn what he wants to tell me, but to learn to see like, who Karl Menger actually was. What kind of guy would write a book like Grundsatze? What kind of examples was he using? And we know that one of his first memories is, is that library, his father's library. Um, we also know that, that he was a bibliophile and he was, he was collecting books and, and, and we know the story that after Karl Menger died, actually because of that collection, his family could, could survive uh, during the hyperinflation because his wife was selling those books. So it's, the, the, it's not 100% in Duke and, and, and Japan. Some of those books just paid, uh, just paid the rent in 1920s before the, the hyperinflation in Weimar Republic. Um, but actually, I started uh, um, looking for like 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 you know history bridges. It, it, it's it's it, it, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit of a artistic gibberish right now. Um, that in my opinion, um, this library and the fact that Menger was collecting books is not only about you know aggregating knowledge, uh, getting more books to read to produce your own books. In my opinion, he was trying to recreate his his family home almost to the end of his life. And it, it, you, you may call this is like a affordable psychology. <laughs> that, that's just only my interpretation. But I'm seeing it this way. He was rebuilding his family home throughout all of his life. Um, he had an absent father because his father died when Carl was six, seven or, or eight years old. It, it doesn't really matter that much. And then he, he's friends with Rudolf, with Crown Prince Rudolf. You know, Crown Prince Rudolf also had issues with his father. He, he was also quite, you know, you, may not, you cannot say he was absent because he was everywhere. Um, but when it comes to relations with Rudolf, you know, I think that Karl Menger and Rudolf had some common topics to talk about. They, they could be friends on that. And, and as we know, Rudolf also was, was collecting books. And, and I think that Karl tried to recreate that cozy family picture uh, of, his, of his childhood. And then he... As we know, maybe this corroborates the story, maybe not. But basically, we know that he was like 60 years old or something when he had his own son, right? Carl, the, the K, Carl uh, Jr., right? And, and, and suddenly, he could recreate that picture, but this time, he was the father in, in that picture. He was not the son. You know, maybe this sounds romantic. Maybe it's cheap. 
But people like it, you know, it's a story, it's, it's more humane, there are no numbers to remember, you know. It's, it's just, that's just a speculation, I don't know if that's true. But if you follow those footsteps, you know, those, those people, those things are like pop up. And when this is the Maniowy uh, village, because as we know, he spent only two years in Nowy Sąd, and then they moved to, uh, to the Maniowy. These are, these are not the, the actual places, I mean, th th this is the, the, the church of Maniowy. Um, we don't know how it looked like in, in 1885, because there was no photo cameras in Maniowy back then. No Instagram, nothing. But actually, if you read Grundsatze today, the, 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 his famous book, it, it, it's a story of Maniowy brought to a book, to an economic book. When he talks about cigarettes, about like the, the, those bushels and water and rice and, and every product, if you, if you look at it this way, he's using examples from his childhood. Then when he moves from Maniowy um, to study, oh yeah, and he, was, he, he, he loved fishing actually. This is a this is very important, uh, important um, thing. It doesn't sound much, it, it, it cannot sound, it may not sound important at, at first when you just read a biography and then he went fishing, okay. But this is a very important point that he was fishing actually. But then when he moves to, to Kraków, this is how his uh, gymnasium looks like now. Uh, I only could um, deliver the, the Google Maps picture. I'm, I'm, I don't have a better one for a moment. You know that he was like 14 years old and he had to teach younger kids to survive. He, he, he was a teacher when he was like 12, 13, 14 years old. He started teaching really early on, and he also had to be an entrepreneur. You know, that was the way he would pay for his, for his room, for his, uh, for, his, uh, for his living. Then he goes to Prague, and actually this is the place that he was studying. This is the Carolinum. This is the place, the actual place. I've been there two months ago uh, to film this place and see that. This is the exact place that he was sitting in and, and gaining knowledge, and it's his first um, his first conflict with, with the Dean Schneider of, 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 of this university was about the quality of teaching. Because then Menger was like 18 years old or 20 years old, I don't really remember that, or 22, something like that, 1863 or something. Um, Menger is furious because he says that, 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 that this teaching is bullshit. The quality of your teaching is, is, is very wrong. And this is actually the beginning of the Methoden strike later, because he already um, you know, it starts, so everything starts in, in, in Menger's youth, and, and, and then you can go, go for it. I was also, uh, I'm also searching for every place that Menger lived or worked in, and this is the, the, the market square, and this is actually the picture from 1860s, so this is exactly the moment where, when, when Menger was living there in Prague. Uh, so that's how it looks like, like now and how it looks uh, on the old postcard. Um, yeah, he goes back to, Praga, uh, to Vienne from Praga, we're following him, exactly, and we have that stock exchange situation. Um, and, and you know what, um, like, I don't want to say that von Hayek is, is, is wrong, but he says that, that the Grundsatz, uh, this ideology was after, I mean, I mean, Menger came up with these ideas after um, worked, he worked on a stock exchange. Um, the official version is that he discovered this marginal utility while working as a, as a, as a journalist for Wiener Zeitung, and he was um, writing about uh, a stock exchange. But in my opinion, so I have like a, like a third option, everything settled way, way, way before. Even though we know that when he started writing Grundsatze, he was more into, um, he was not really the a priori kind of guy. He was more with the German school of, 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 of historians. But then he was writing that book and something clicked. Um, and he went this way. Uh, because of course, you can always ask, you know, he had a brother, Anton, who was like a you know, full-fledged socialist, and he had a brother, Karl, um, what was it, Max, right? I don't really know about Max's ideology. He was liberal, but, but I don't know in which sense, actually. But yeah, you're gonna learn from the documentary. Let's not spoil everything, right? Um, so they also, you know, they are coming from the same family, from the same background, and they, and they went like three different directions, you know? So, so it's not that it's only, on, always gonna be the same way. Um, so this is actually a very much against historians, uh, the German historians, right? You have three, <laughs> three kids from the same family, same background, and all of them going in different directions. So how can you predict anything, right, actually? Okay, so this is Rudolf and, and, and his father, as we know. Um, they went fishing together as well. Let's not forget about that. And fishing was one of the, like, very little um, things that Menger would do outside uh, reading and, and writing and, and teaching. Uh, uh, 
about banking. So fishing was like his, his thing to do somehow. And of course, it was, a, the, uh, it was that for, for Rudolf. Um, so I'm trying to find any place that is connected somehow to, to Menger. And, 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 and this is Berlin, actually. And they are sharing a street with Schmeller, which is a joke in my opinion, but, but a nice one. Um, what else? Um, again, we have that library. I don't know why, actually. Because I already told you the story. Yeah, and I'm looking for pictures. That's the last apartment that Menger lived that was here in, 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 in Vienna. Um, and I'm trying also to sneak to, to, to see the stairs and to see how those places look like. So I'm sneaking with a camera to the buildings. I don't know if it's legal. I hope not, actually. Um, yeah, so we have that First World War. Uh, this is the place that you can find, you know, this, the university. The, there's this, this, this commemorating, how do you call that, plaque or, or thing like that. Um, it was a hospital during the First World War. Um, okay, this is old, old Menger. Um, I mean, so I have a lot of theories, and maybe they are, they are wrong theories about that movie, but, but really, um, I hope it's going to be interesting because it's not, not typically, you know, about economy. Five, I have five more minutes. I'm already finished, actually. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and we have to, like, bring those examples and, 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 and rewrite them to some extent. So if, if, if they are talking about diamonds and water, maybe we should use, I don't know, Bitcoin and energy, because this is more up to date, right? I, I was looking for anything that would, I would connect somehow, you know, Menger with, with, the, with the more common themes that we have uh, uh, on social media. But actually, um, anything I found is that the... the the Austro-Hungarian Empire was, was, was like divided into cis Leitania and trans Leitania. I don't know if that would, <laughs> that would fly, um, but that's an accident. Um, okay, so we have old, um, old Grandpa Menger, and, and that's probably all I wanted to say. I, wanted, I, I don't want to sell this, don't get me wrong, I don't want to sell that project to you. I just want you to know that, that, that uh, uh, we're doing anything that's possible to make it a watchable film. So people outside who are not with us here today will enjoy that movie. And if you can uh, contribute in any way, you can criticize anything that I've, I've presented. You can, you know, um, give me some, some other, I don't know, trivia about Menger. I would be, I would be happy to, to, to know that I can count on you. Oh, and this is me with, with, with uh, Carl, um, as you can see. So yeah, Carl lives. He, he absolutely, you know, he endorses the production officially. So it's, so it's an official biography of Carl Menger. And this is the moment that, that uh, Miko I was talking about. That's, that's the moment where we, how was it, like eight months ago, 10 months ago in, in Novi Sonj, that's the, that's the roundabout with Carl Menger on it uh, in Novi Sonj. Oh yeah, and the one important thing about the most important place in, Manio in, in, in Menger's life, the Maniova residence, the one that I told you that, that he was living there when he was young, where everything started back then. This is how Maniova looks like right now. This is his, his village. Um, because like 20 or 30 years ago, it was put underwater to build a dam. And the funny thing is that you can go fishing there now. Thank you very much. Uh, I just said, sorry, I had one uh, quick question. I was curious to see uh, when you're talking about expanding, reaching different people that are uh, not only the economic sphere, but also consumers, newer people coming up. Do you feel that you're starting from zero uh, when it comes to reaching consumers, when it comes to reaching the general population? Or do you feel that there is enough information about Menger out there that someone will have an inclination to uh, have a starting point? Or do you feel you have to educate them from the get-go and really teach them about this character of, uh, of history um, to get them started down the path? How, how, how does that microphone work? Yeah, this way. Um, it's impossible to, to put everything into one hour 20 movie. So, so we have to cut, we have to be brutal about it. And, and I have to assume that um, that my viewers are coming from absolutely, you know, different cultures, different planets, also, uh, almost, yeah. So, 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 so it needs to be, it needs to be basic. It needs to be a gateway drug to more knowledge. I, I would hate that movie to be, you know, over 
weight with 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 you know theories and heavy knowledge and all that. So it has to be it it, it has to be poppy to some extent. It cannot be idiotic. So so you know you have to find this this level of <laughs> Um, and, and balance it somehow. So this is also very hard because because Menger's life is like several movies in, in one, and you have to go everywhere and, and and talk about history and 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 try to like you know put it all together. Um, so yeah, but this is going to be a, a, a gateway. Uh, it, it's actually this is our. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at this movie as how do you call that in in this MCU universe when you have the Avengers and what what not origin movie, right? Yeah, so, so let's, let's call it an origin movie for the Austrian school. One other thing that is important is that the uh, many contexts, because about Menger, as I've mentioned, there is zero knowledge about Menger, even in his hometown, uh, at the university in which he got his doctorate, uh, almost no one knows about it. They were genuinely surprised when we were looking through the archives, stuff like this. Uh, but a general context is known, but still known only to the people, for example, in Poland or in the old empire, like, for example, the, the, the poverty in Galicia, which was highly influential in Menger early days. He was alive when the uprising, peasant uprising against the nobility happened. There was basically a blood running through the streets not far from where he was uh, based at the time. But again, this context wouldn't be understandable to the broader audience that we want to reach. Uh, that, that's why uh, we are uh, looking for this more universal themes that Tomek was uh, speaking about. Uh, Clifford Thies, uh, US. Uh, if this is a, a origins movie, it's also a recovery movie. And so you might want to talk about the eclipse of Menger and the Austrian school by the, the dominant uh, Anglo-American school. Uh, you know, naming that, that uh, um, using that origin um, <coughs> the hashtag would, 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 would sound like a promise that we're going to continue with, you know, number two, number three, and the second trilogy, the, the first trilogy, yeah, and then TV series, <laughs> the ultimate, whatever, you know, there is, yeah, and our own Mug Drive sets and whatnot. Yeah, that would, that would be nice to actually sell uh, the Austrians in McDonald's. That would be great. There is one other thing that we, we want to avoid is, uh, because I, I think many of us share this feeling of isolation. I mean, it's changing in recent years, but most of us in our universities or, or professional contexts, well, th there are not that many Austrians to, to talk to. Or I think that's a the common experience. We, we wouldn't want this all to feel like a story of something far gone into the future, something hopeless. We want to show the story of a man who started uh, from basically from nothing, and, and that's true, and went on to change the world, and truly in a meaningful change the world uh, with an impact that lasts to this day. And, and we want this to uh, show that the Menger legacy, even though he himself might not be that well remembered, is alive and well today, not only in Poland, not only in the US, but all over the world. And that's, that's the, the, the uh, in, maybe insane, but that's the real ambition behind this project. Well, uh, we don't have any more time, so with this, I would like to end and thank the uh, Mises Institute Poland. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, they're here for the whole conference, so do add them. And please be on time after the recess for the keynote speech. Thank you. This is in 10 minutes, right? Thank you very much.